0-3212 with the access code of 8460619. We are missing our chairperson today. My name is Eric Gaspar. I will be serving uh, as the chair today. Uh, We'll do a quorum check. Do I have to nominate? Quick vote to nominate you as the chair for the day. All right, so uh, I, uh, I, I nominate Eric Gaspar to be our chairman for the day. All right. Second the nomination. All right. Uh, any uh, any uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, the motion carries three three to nothing. Um, quorum check then. Uh, if you could just state your name and that you are present. Ted Winglass, present. Roy Bishop, present. Eric Gaspar, present. And Ed Barnacle, our chair, is uh, is not in today. We are uh, one member short, so if anybody is interested in joining us for a fun-filled uh, 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 group, we are uh, taking uh, applications, nominations in the town administrator's office. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. All right, wonderful. Um, all right, so the barnacle walk-in period. Do we have anybody uh, right away, or do we want to be uh, go through any of anything else, Becky? No, but we do have um, Scott Morrison here for an agenda item under old business number eight. It's four thirteen Main Street. Okay. Um, so I think we can go right to him. Um, just um, as a reminder for those who've been on the board, uh, we'll, we'll, we can wait on that for the opening. Just make sure we do that. Um, and then for Ted, who's new here. So um, Scott is here. Um, There's a um, site in town where there was a parking lot slope failure um, where they went in and made immediate repairs to the parking lot, stabilized the slope. A lot of material um, washed out into the stream, which is just below that. Um, They were instructed to to work to put together um, a restoration plan to remove that sediment um, within the resource areas down there. So Scott has um, presented this. it just came in yesterday, so I, I brought it to you to take a look at, um, so that way we can kind of move forward on this. Um, took a quick look at it. One of the things I would just add um, is just maybe to have your oversight when the workers are there or a qualified person um, while they're doing to doing the work to make sure that um, we don't see any um, inadvertent impacts while they do like the, the removal within the stream there. And one other thing maybe, um, think about too and, and you probably thought about it when you're doing yours is I know there's beaver dams on both sides but should there be anything in place to kind of prevent some turbidity or do you anticipate any concerns with turbidity um, with that but I'll, I'll let you go over your proposal okay. that's just that those are just the one things I, I was kind of thinking about I didn't walk that whole area and see it probably seems insignificant but yeah the material that's got down there is really sandy material so I wouldn't expect like okay a real, perfect and it's as you said, it's it's sandwiched in between two beaver dams, so there's not really, you know, heavily flowing water. They're going to be doing work in there. There will be some turbidity as they're removing that material, but it's really kind of contained. Um, we looked at several alternatives. That's what essentially took so long. We were looking at different ways to try and remove this, if there was an easier way, if they could get a machine down there. It's a steep slope, so you get the parking lot, a, kind of a steep slope. Some of it's rip-wrapped, and then you've got the stream channel at the bottom. So given that, it's too far to reach for an excavator. So I think the only real, the the most economical way to get this material out is to send guys with buckets and shovels, shovel into buckets and pull the material out. It's a lot of work, but we looked at, you know, we've done this in the past where we've done conveyor belts to remove the material. So you get like a series of conveyor belts. It's just cost prohibitive. We looked at potentially accessing the back the problem there is if you bring a like a track skid steer it's really wet back there and it wouldn't be bad if you had to bring the machine in once turn it around and get it out but if you've got to do it a few times you're just going to make a colossal mess so as difficult as it is they'll just kind of cut a path through there load material in the buckets and it'll be the bucket brigade to to remove the material once they get to the parking lot they'll dump it into a truck and then for off-site disposal Pretty straightforward. My suggestion um, would be if the commission's amenable to it, um, given that it's a slope failure, it's a really unforeseen issue, the easiest way and the quickest way to deal with this would be have the commission, I don't know if an enforcement order has been issued or anything, but issue an enforcement order authorizing this restoration plan. 
I guess with the additional caveat that somebody, you know, myself or somebody else um, qualified oversees that work to make sure that it gets done in a, a timely manner. And that would be the quickest way of doing it. And then we could schedule guys to get in there as soon, you know, yeah, soon. T typically with that, you'd, you'd give a time frame to have that completed. What do you think is a, a you know, 30 days that they would be able to get that completed? You, you I know, would, it's weather dependent. It's um, weather dependent. I would say, I think the goal would be 30 days, but if you could give us, you know, as soon as possible, maybe 60 days to get the work done, I think that would be appropriate. Right. And work to occur, you know, during dry conditions, ideal conditions, something of that right. nature. If that water isn't moving much, is there any risk or fear of it freezing over? It's always a possibility. Um, um, that'd be my only concern. It's warm now, but if right. we get a cold snap and it yeah. freezes over 60 days, it might not be enough. Right. So. Right. Right. But if right, we start thinking 60, 90 days, then really should we just be filing a notice of intent to get that done? You know, that's the question that comes up, I guess. So if, if it can be done sooner, that might be Or ideal, why don't but. we say 60 days and less, you know, there's an icing issue. Okay. If that's amenable to would that, would that work for you, but or should? I think you can write it how you, how you want. I think that's okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think ideally, like a quicker turnaround would be better. I'd like to try and get it done in the next two yeah. or three weeks, yeah. if possible. You, uh, maybe say forty-five days. You know. Otherwise, DEP might say, "Hey, well, why aren't you just having them file a notice of intent? They can't do it right now, anyways." Um, but you know that. The idea of moving forward this way is to get it done as soon as possible to reduce those impacts. So maybe right. just leaving it at that. So now rem remind us: is there an enforcement order currently? No, this no. was an emergency we, request, right? We never got an emergency request. They just it, like it happened, and they immediately went out there, and we actually saw it. And then Chris McClure came out, and he said, "I was going to call you guys later." Okay. Um, so there's been nothing that's been issued for it. So the repairs were pretty much made by the time we we got there. So okay. nothing was issued. Yeah, because it was a hazardous condition because the, essentially yeah. the, the back half of the parking lot just, washed right just out. failed. Yeah. Is there any recurring concern? McClure oversaw the restoration work. There was concern potentially like a pipe that went through there that yeah. may have yeah. been. I know that McClure Engineering has been yeah. periodically checking it to make sure that it. And the last happened. time they um, came in um, had been, I think this happened mid September early to mid-September, and when they ended up coming in, I think it was November, he had been monitoring that, and in that report he gave us at that time, he did indicate that, that they've been monitoring it, um, and there has been no future failure of that, but that might not be a bad idea since it, you know, only has been four months or so since it's happened, maybe just to have that be monitored for a little bit longer. Um, there is the pipe underneath, which is an old DOT pipe. Doesn't appear that it's a functioning pipe anymore, bringing storm water. And what he thought the reason was is that that parking lot um, used to be gravel. They came in, um, got approval from the commission to pave it. There is a structure um, located on one side of the parking lot, but a lot of the storm water pitches this way um, and then kind of flows over the embankment of the parking lot down to the, the river. And they think that over time that washed that out and there was a lot of sandy material in there probably which was deposited when they put that dot pipe underneath um, but now chris felt that with the material they replaced there that they've you know reduced or eliminated i don't know if i should say eliminated that it will happen again um, but he had been monitoring it to that point and may still be doing so at this time so maybe a check-in you know for six months or something like that once a month for a period of time might be advisable just to make sure that so can we work the emergency issue and then a, a long-term mitigation plan? Um, well, you can request one. Um, you know, typically something like that would probably be through a order of conditions. Um, but I think you can require with your enforcement order as one of your conditions, one of your orders, to go out and monitor that for a period of time and, and send reports in to ensure that there's not a continuing issue there, if you like. Given the number of rain events we've been having, if we did request six months to monitor that, we'd probably have enough events 
within that period of time to I evaluate. Think six months is yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think yeah. we need to exceed that. I don't think yeah. Because, I mean, if it's done in the next month, that's going to put us right through the end of summer, right, or mm -hmm. middle of the summer. So we'll have, we'll, we'll go through the rainy season in the, sm right. in the spring, and that's when the ground is, yeah, so yeah. I, would th I would think that would cover us. Yeah. But I would expect so. And we can kind of leave it open with that. I don't know if, you know, is there a, um, would you like them to monitor after a rain event of a, significant amount of rain a, a certain amount a half an inch or should we just kind of leave it open check in on the site um once or every two weeks during that time period that might be easier to do i think if i remember correctly chris had chris mcclure had mentioned that one of his employees yep. drives by yep a lot yeah for work like every day for work so i think after heavy rain events he just pulls in the driveway takes a look at it make sure that there's no movement or no issues what, what do they use for the swips for the um modern requirement do you know offhand um we, you could make it you could that's like weekly or half after uh i think it's right. weekly it depends on what the discharge is but i think it's weekly or after we could we could write follow swip protocol. maybe even just simply you know just simply leave it that you know inspect after maybe two inch rainstorm and then a final inspection six months from you know august or something why don't we july why don't we have that and make it a one inch rainstorm okay right but is that agreeable that's pretty decent amount of yeah. rain, and we don't get that very often. So it, you'd be surprised. We're doing monitoring for yeah. one-inch rainstorms, and we're probably out at a site at least monthly, if not two, sometimes three times a month. So. Well, I think that's a good dur maybe a good duration for this. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it's an issue because I think they can simply take it. They've been doing it anyway. Right. So going by there, and then with it. that, would you want them to submit maybe a monthly quick monitoring report on that or? I would think uh, I don't a, think they report at the end of the six months at unless end. they discover a disturbance. Okay. Yeah. And then yep. we would want to be notified of any okay. disturbance. Mm -hmm. I, yep. Right? Yep. Does that work? Sounds good. All right. And so um, we're going to do this through an enforcement order. Right. I think that. Um, the emergency provisions that DEP requires, it's public health or safety. I don't think it would meet the requirement for that now. It's not an emergency. You know, the initial work they had to do, I think, would have, but not this part of it. So I think that's probably the best way to, to keep it moving forward at this time. Okay. Um, do we need, a, we can do an enforcement order without uh, a motion and a vote, or should we do it? Yep, you make a motion and a vote, motion to issue enforcement order with the conditions discussed. Okay. Okay. Like, uh, I'll uh, make any further discussion my only question is since this was a prior to me being on the board can I vote on this you or? you can on this it's not it's not a public hearing so okay yeah I think that's okay all right so I'll make a motion uh, to issue an enforcement order with the com comments from the uh, the agent yep and to follow the um, Provided restoration plan with the addition of uh, oversight by a professional wetland scientist during work. Okay. Do we have a second? Second the motion. Any discussion? All right. All, all those in favor? Aye. Roy Bishop in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy Appreciate you coming in. All right. Roy. Kick okay. us off? Absolutely. Okay, opening statement for public hearings. In the interest of saving time, the Sturbridge Conservation Commission will hold, hold all public hearings tonight for work within a wetland, water body, or resource area and or within 200-foot buffer zone to a wetland, water body, or resource area in accordance with the Mass Wetland Protection Act, Chapter 131, sec Section 40, in associated regulations and the town of Sturbridge wetland bylaws and associated regulations. 
We will not be reading the newspaper ad. Prior to opening the first hearing for each project, the applicant is to submit proof of notification to abutters within 200 feet of the subject property line in proof of legal newspaper advertisement. If these items are not submitted, the public hearing will not open. Additionally, prior to the start of each public hearing, we will announce the location of the project, the applicant, and the applicant's representative. If any of the visitors have not legibly signed in yet, please do. Also, if any visitors are recording this meeting, please let us know. Thank you. Thanks, Roy. Uh, all right, 605 is uh, 16 Mount Dan Road. It's a continued hearing, notice of intent, raise and rebuild of a single family lakefront Lakefront House, DP file number 300-1135. Okay, Beck, so, so for this one, we have a um, request for our continuance to our next meeting, which is January 26th. Okay. Make a motion that we uh, extend the notice of intent for DP number 300-1135. And for the next meeting, what's the date on? 26. January 26th, January. yeah. 26th. Okay, perfect. Do we have a second? I can... Because it's just a continuance for these and we're not having any discussion, you can. All right. And uh, I'll second the motion to continue the public hearing on 16 Mount Dan Road. All right. Any discussion? All right. Uh, all, uh, all those in favor? Ted Winglass, aye. Roy Bishop? Yes. Eric Gaspar, in favor? All right. Well, it's 6... 18 so we can go on to 615 uh, 698 Main Street notice of intent this is another continuation for a commercial building within with associated parking and utilities DP file number 300-1144 Beck what do we got here uh, same thing there's a request for a continuance to January 26th okay I make a motion that we uh, authorize a re request for continuance for 68 Main Street TEP number 300-1144. Okay, is there a second? I'll second the motion to continue the public hearing on 698 Main Street. All right, any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Ted Winglass, aye. Or Bishop in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor. All right, we got a few minutes before. Do we wanna do wetlands decisions or minutes or what? Yep. And can we, can we, do minutes. Yeah, there's two of you. Well, uh, uh, well so it may, it is be. this the time to maybe d discuss? Uh, we need to figure out quorum and what uh, we need the attorney yes. yep. to so, assist us. Yeah, here. so um, I did uh, contact town council this afternoon again and asked them to um, look at that again and provide, oh, sorry, um, provide us with written documentation of that so he is going to review everything um tomorrow in more detail and get back to us so okay. he will provide us something yeah and it, i mean for for me um if the written detail is the extent of what we discussed today i personally would like them K kp law to go and dig a little bit deeper because there has to be precedent it doesn't seem reasonable to me and and ted yeah. and roy what we're talking about is um obviously when we were a three-person board we just needed a two to one vote to carry any question, mm -hmm. right? Um, Ted is ineligible of voting on any question that is that has already been raised, right? But the attorney has given his advisement that because we are now a four person board, then we would need three votes in order to carry the question, but that would require all three of the legacy members because Ted and any future member would not be able to vote. That doesn't seem reasonable within the law to me because we can only have three people voting on this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But we are applying quorum rules based off if we had four. Right. So we only sense. have three eligible voting members, but we are applying quorum rules based on four. So to me, that doesn't pass the reasonability uh, uh, yeah, I would think Idea that you, two people would be able to to vote. I would think right. It yeah. just seems unfair to the applicants. Yeah. 
Um, mm -hmm. And this isn't anything the applicants did. Not anything that we had done either, but, oh, I, I, but you know. The law isn't intended to hurt an applicant through the process. Right, so. exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's looking at our bylaw regulation. So um, the way it used to be written in the bylaw regulations, and I think it's the way it is for the state act, is it's majority is majority of the members present at the meeting. Um, and the way it's written in the bylaw regulations now, it's majority of members in office at the time. So that's why he gave that opinion. But I think that, like I said, he's going to look into it some more. Um, and provide something in, in writing so we can have that because the bylaw is different than the state act. So, yeah. so hopefully we get some further clarification on that. Okay, that makes sense. So that said, then you you believe that we can because he can't vote on the minutes with two. Can we vote well, to approve the minutes? It's he just wasn't part of the minutes before. So. Well, was, yeah. Guess, yeah. Well, know. let's just wait on it. Let's wait on the minutes. Something. I would. I would abstain anyways because I wasn't here. Yeah. To, I, to I think we should just. It'd so. be better just wait. wait in the minutes. It's not dire. If someone wants to request a draft copy, there's always draft copies available that we can um, provide to people as a public record. So I think it might be just better to wait on that. Okay. Well, we got three minutes. Is there? Yeah, we can go into the wetland decisions. Okay. Um, so number four, um, 50 Hall Road, this was an emergency certification that was issued um, on 1226. Um, they actually called the office, um, the office closed that day because it's the day after Christmas. They reached out to Ed, Ed went out there. They had a, um, a water line burst somewhere um, and which flooded part of their building. So Ed uh, graciously went out there and um, what they need to do is they need to um, rip up part of the parking lot. Um, within 100 feet of resource area, which is the state act um, jurisdiction, over 50 feet away, um, rip that up, find where the water pipe burst, and um, repair that. So they did that work on December 28th, um, and we do have, I haven't gotten it yet, um, we do just had a requirement that they send a report afterwards um, outlining the work that they had to do. But um, they did call me when they were doing some of the work, and they did have, um, they were able to locate the, the pipe burst in that first day so it was a, a minor minor repair for them so oh, so good. so with emergency certifications when it's not issued by the full board we do need to put it on the next meeting agenda and it needs to be ratified by the board um so i'd ask that you'd ratify the um emergency certification that was issued okay do, do we have a motion to uh, ratify the emergency certification for 50 hall road so moved do we have a second I'll second the motion. All right. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Ted Winglass, aye. Or Bishop in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor. Yeah, we're close. Right. We're, a minute, we're a minute away. Um, number five, 40 Draper Woods Road. This is a request for a partial certificate of compliance for DEP file number 300 459. Um, this, this, order of conditions was issued for um, phase one of the Draper Woods subdivision in town. Um, Ted, just so you're aware, a lot of our um, subdivisions have um, outstanding open order. So every time, uh, this one's actually just wrapping up, but every time a property sale happens, um, that original order is tied to the new deed because it originally was one big property. Um, so this property um, is requesting a partial limited to just their property, not the, the full subdivision. That's what the partial would be for. Um, so I pulled out the project plans. This lot actually is not even within jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Um, so no work on it was, was really part of what was being um, reviewed previously. Um, and it's been established for quite some time, so there's no destabilization or anything like that. So I'd recommend issuing a partial certificate of compliance, um, and there's no need for per perpetual conditions on this one. This original, he had two orders of condition. Well, there's multiple order conditions for this property. This first one, that is this, is the road infrastructure. They had some um, wetland crossings and stormwater um, in some of the lots. And then there's another order that covered a couple other phases of the project. So you're aware. Okay. Would you like to make a motion? Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve a partial certification compliance as requested 
for DP file 459. 459. Perfect. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion to issue a partial certificate of compliance for DEP 0459. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Ted Winglass, aye. Roy Bishop in favor. Eric Gaspar in favor. We made it. 420, well, 420, I mean, uh, 626. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, open the public hearing for uh, Lot 3, 25th Kill Road and 30 Main Street, Berry Farm Road uh, uh, for a notice of intent. This is a continued uh, public hearing for construction of a 68 lot manufactured housing community. DEP file has not yet been issued. Beck, what do we got here? Um, same thing as the others. We have a request for a continuance to our January 26th meeting. Okay. Do I have a motion? Make a motion for a, uh, to approve the request for continuation okay. for the, the address mentioned. Okay. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Ted Winglass, aye. Roy Bishop in favor. Eric Gaspar in favor. All right. All right, so number um, six, which is the minutes, we'll skip those and add that to the next meeting agenda. Um, number seven on here under old business, um, 53 Beach Ave. Um, this is another partial certificate of compliance. Um, it's not a request, that's why it's not under wetland decisions. This was actually issued in 2019 to the previous property owner. And yeah, they actually need some wet signatures here for this one, but um, so what happened was um, this person bought this property, the previous property owner um, received a certificate of compliance request from us. However, they never recorded it. Uh, this property is actually looking for a remortgage or something and it came up on the title search. Um, so since it's already been issued we're just reissuing um, and at that point in time we did not have our electronic signature um, thing in place with the registry it's of deeds pre-covid pre oh, wet signatures yep so we actually have to have signatures and because it's just a reissue it's, it's okay that it has it ted you got to sign it to you um just sign that um for them so had it been past that, I could have just, since you already issued it, it's already been issued by the board, had it been during like the COVID period where we had the electronic signatures, I could have just done it that way and not brought it to the meeting. Um, but we need to do it that way because the only wet signature piece of paper from the last one is missing. We had this come up before and this is the same way we handled it. It's all right. Okay, okay to do things like the dinosaurs did every once in yeah, a while. Yeah, 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 Ted, just so you're aware, we, um, we have, a, we have a document recorded at the Registry of Deeds that allows us to do electronic signatures. So in the past, what we would do is, um, it, say you approved a project at a meeting, um, we would bring it back to the next meeting that was the commission standard with the actual permit with all the conditions and the board would um, sign it at that time. So they would review everything, all the conditions would be stated. What we tried to do now is at the meeting have all of the conditions kind of stated um, at the hearing where the project is approved, and then I issue it afterwards um, if it's not already drafted. So uh, we have 21 days after a project is voted on to issue a determination. So okay. we try to do it as soon as possible, but. All right. Number nine, <coughs> 226 Roy Road. Yep, so number nine and number 10 um, was requested to be put on hold to the next meeting. Um, this was discussed with the chair. He um, was acceptable to that. We will be having a meeting with the town administrator and the property owner, um, Mr. Goodwin and myself, to kind of give him some better details on what he needs to do for um, those properties. And then we'll bring it back to a meeting. And, and, and then get our trespass order uh, lifted. What uh, was the date that those were heard previously, just so I could read on those. He'd never been heard. Really. Oh, nothing's ever been heard. Um, he did come to a meeting. Yeah. Um, that was the. He came to the last meeting, the, right? December. Two, 
Or was no, it no, it was the November meeting. It was when we had all the agenda items. Yeah, long, long. yeah it oh. was the November 17th meeting. It's not a public hearing, though, um, and nothing's been formally issued. or minutes on that. What's that? There's minutes on that. They are. Yep, yeah. yep. Okay. So, you, yeah, and we can. Just to catch up. Huh? Yep, that's the 11 17 2022 meeting. You could also watch that yeah. if you that wanted, portion, or that portion of it. We could help you. End. We could help you find that on the website where you, you know, and give you the time to get to or show you how to do that if you like. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, administrative updates, committee updates. Well, uh, certainly nothing on CPA or. Uh, there's nothing on lakes. I can tell you that. That's, yeah. Um, trails. I think well, they I mean, have once we get reorged and we uh, fully up, we'll we'll need to do committee yeah. reassignments again, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. Just so you failed to mention that in the interview process. Uh, the, I wasn't part of the interview <laughs> process. <laughs> yeah. So there are liaisons on other boards. Um, I'm Eric's. familiar with all how that works. So. Yeah, okay. but just, just so um, just so you do know, um, CPA is meeting on Monday, and I'm going to that meeting. Um, we have a. What does that stand for? Oh, sorry, the Community um, Preservation Act. Okay. Um, so we are a CPA community, which means that um, as part of our taxes, we put a portion of that into this fund, um, and there's like matching funds from the state. So certain projects projects that we might do on our open space parcels. So if we want to buy a property, if the town wanted to buy a property, we could use CPA funds um, and use that money to purchase that property. Um, and with that comes, you know, there's requirements that we would have to do, like putting a conservation sure. restriction, sure. Um, things of that nature. They can use it for housing. Um, you know, there's a whole, whole list of things that can be used for that. There's cemetery projects, trail projects. Um, so we do look to try to use some of those funds for projects in our conservation properties. Um, so two things that we're bringing forward um, right now, one is a request. We have a new property on Fisk Hill that was purchased um, a year and a half ago, I believe now. Um, we are required to put a conservation restriction on it. It's not in the care and custody of the Conservation Commission, but I was asked by the town administrator to work on it. So I am going to the CPC, which is the committee, um, to ask them for funds um, to work on that. Um, you know, we do have to find a CR holder. There's an endowment that um, they get for doing monitoring um, for us on there. Um, there's potential surveys that need to be done with new baseline monitoring, and there's some um, administrative fees associated with it too. So we're asking for that, and it'll go on town meeting. This is for town meeting um, next year in June. Mm -hmm. um, this year? This year. Yeah, yeah, yeah this year. Um, we're also asking for some funds for our Plimpton property. Uh, this is a property that was purchased through CPA funds, and there was a grant to Community Forest. Um, there's uh, a lot of dead trees out there that are being um, blown over by the wind that the Trails Committee has some concerns about. We need to work on a trail plan out there, some wildlife habitat management. We have some rare species. We need to do some permitting um, for, some, for those projects that we're going to do out there. So we're looking for a... Um, creation of a master plan for habitat, wildlife habitat preservation, enhancing public access. You, you, you can't ask for like um, building. You can't say I'm going to build a trail. I'm, you know, uh, providing public access or I'm um, enhancing. We do like invasive species removal. We've done that in the past. And um, we're enhancing field edge habitat and, you know, things like that. You have to word things a certain way to be qualified. So. So I am going for that for, for next year, so you're aware. Sounds good. Um, all right, number 11. Um, number 11, um, this is one of, we receive these yearly notifications from National Grid. Um, they're required by law to um, send this to us. Um, it's a 45-day yearly operational plan public notice um, review and comment period. Um, it's, you know, we're one of multiple towns uh, that that's sent to, it's sent to us, the Board of Selectmen, um, also Board of Health. One of the things they note they're really interested in is location of wells where they're doing their um, management because they do use herbicides, um, something that Board of Health would comment on it or any other areas of significant concern they should be aware of. So 
and they use all the GIS mapping that we use too. Um, we usually don't have anything specific to comment to them. It's just more of a notification that we have the letter, so. Mm -hmm. All right, I guess that gets us to the uh, agent report. Um, with that, I was just gonna really kind of notify you about what I'm doing with CPEA um, funds at the request that I have, which I just gave you, so I don't really have anything else. Okay, well, I was chair for 36 minutes, unless you guys wanna keep this one going. Anybody uh, like to make a motion? Usually it's the junior person who makes yeah. the motion. I'll make a motion to Adjourn. To adjourn the meeting of January 5th, 2023, Conservation Commission. We have a second. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right.